Ladies and gentle farmers, we have finished an epic, I don't even know what to call it. It's just an epic accomplishment of backyard redneck engineering today. You, a lot of people on this channel know me for being, um, I don't know, a lot of stuff about Siskova's chicken tractors, which you can see there's two in the background there. There's a third one in the background. And I did a video about tips and tricks to make that an easier build. And I even did a video uh, about a grant that I did that used those chicken tractors that talked about my experience with them. And I love them. I think they're great. Multi-purpose. I can stand up in them. They're fantastic. But sometimes push comes to shove and you don't have the resources to be able to build another one. Now, it's coronavirus time and I've been busy with work and we've had lambs and we have puppies. There should be some puppies over there. Hey, Inigo. Eh, he's in not sure what you're doing mode. But regardless of all of that, we have a chicken tractor that we're literally rolling out, just rolled out right now. And I wanted to share it with you there it is in all of its glory. It is a tow behind chicken tractor, which I know kind of puts it out of the scope of a lot of what people are doing because it's supposed to be movable by hand and everything, but we are scaling up. There is demand for chicken this year. And so we are, instead of growing 180 the whole year, we're growing Sorry, it's been a long day, I'm not, not doing the math. 100, 200, plus 240, 440 birds this year. And this fella right here is going to be able to enable that. Let's take a look at it. All right, so there's the uh, Fearless ATV. And here is a, I believe it's a 13 and a half foot trailer that my former neighbor Doug gave me. And Doug is awesome. Uh, because he also gave me that tiny little kids ATV that Jack has a ball on. But this trailer has been in some use, but it's getting a little less road worthy. Um, and what I wanted to do is put it to some use while I'm sitting around not, uh, while it's sitting around not doing, that's enough honking, thanks. It's the neighbors. Um, and so what happened is that big building right there had a, hailstorm a couple years ago runs straight east or west to east and so that building right there and this building right here by the insurance company thought well it would be fantastic if we could only replace half of it because hail only hit you know half of it uh, of course but thanks to a good contractor i got the whole thing replaced and this is leftover uh, roofing steel from that and i have a pile of about I don't know, 100 and, well, no, if I cut them in half. I had 20 odd pieces that are 20, 256 inches long. So what I did is I cut them in half and then I put five two by fours. You can see them. There's one, two, three, four, five. And they are just cross pieces that are screwed to a the metal frame of the trailer. And then it's just your good old fashioned pole barn screws on top to get them in and you know obviously there's leftover holes from where it was put um where it was attached to the roof before then but this is okay it's just a chicken tractor and then what we have back here is those don't go all the way from front to back um, because these little supports that bring the the gate down um, so what we have back here is just our storage so that is our feed bucket and you know once we're getting lots of birds we can get multiple feed buckets in here by sliding it that way we could even put some water back there if we need it now i know what you're saying you could never move this by hand and that's true don't intend to move it by hand uh, and so along with any other chicken tractor that has wheels this is going to suffer from the same issue which is you never know when there's a chicken uh, going to be near those wheels and so moving it is going to be uh you know interesting but we have some ideas around that the only other really feature about this that I'm particularly excited about is there is these feeders. Now, these are the same John Siskovich feeders from his book. 
what I like is that they're on some rope and then you can just hold them right here with your knees, flip them over and you have your feed sitting right up here. Take that feed and just go right in. Then when you're done, you let it go down right to the chickens and that's it. Uh, and then what we have here is a couple of boat cleats and some paracord. And so basically as needed, we can take this and I put way too much rope on here, but you know, better safe than sorry. So this makes it so that uh, when you need to move the feeders up and down, they're adjustable. Oh, that's kind of cool. You just do that. So they're adjustable. There's a, you can see there's an eyelet on the end here. There's an eyelet up there. It goes down here. Just give it a little tug and you have an adjustable length. So when the birds first come out, it'll be, you know, basically dragging on the floor or dragging on the ground. And as they get older, you just pull it up a little bit. And once you have it to the length that you want, a testament to how simple this is, I can hold a camera in one hand and secure it with the other. So I think that's pretty cool. And again, moving this by ATV or by the old Jeep and not really planning to do anything uh, by hand here. If push did come to shove, no pun intended, we could get someone to push on that end someone to pull on this end it is possible to move this trailer even though it's heavy steel to it is possible to move it by hand and then you know if you ever needed to take it on the road it's got working lights how's that for a trailer uh you know i didn't really plan on using this all ever on the road again um unless i was going to put the investment in to put new tires on it they're bald and that's just not going to happen so the uh, dimensions of it is about it's about 10 and a half by 10 so that comes out to a little over 100 square feet so we're planning on doing uh, 100 bird batches so that should be enough uh, shade for them uh, no they're not intending we're not intending for them to go in the space between the railings of the trailer and the top there we are intending them to spend their life under here uh, and and then also the feeders is where they'll spend some time because they can get their shade under here and get their feed uh, under the sides without uh, rain, which is well, how that was designed. Uh, cost to build, obviously I got the trailer for free, all of the steel for free. Um, so that means, you know, this isn't exactly what you'd call a repeatable build, but just hopefully just some ideas. So the cost of this would be a couple of eyelets, some paracord, a 10 foot four inch PVC, and then five 10 foot uh, two by fours, not treated, don't need, I don't really feel like a need treated. And then there's some special screws, uh, metal to wood, um, uh, self-tapping screws uh, that hold that whole thing into place. It's super solid. A lot of people are going to ask me about wind. The whole thing is very, very um, uh, solid on there. And also, I'd say heavy enough that we don't really need to worry about wind being an issue at all. So, uh, sorry, I went skipped past total costs there. Basically, you can go, hey, doves, um, and price out five 2 by 4 10-footers and a 10-foot 4-inch PVC and a box of screws, and I think you'll probably be at less than 50 bucks. Of course, the big kicker on this is that there'll have to be a um, Premier One fence, just like that one back there around it. But when you think about a Siskovich chicken tractor, that's about 350 to 400 dollars these days. Um, and this, 50 dollars plus 120, say for a for a chicken fence, we're still looking at you know roughly half price or less uh, to build this, given that there's so much free material. Okay, so that is all that we have for that, which I'm excited about because I, for the grant that I did, I kept track of how long it took me to make Siskovich chicken tractors, and it was about 20 hours each. I did two of them at the same time. I think it was between 35 and 40 hours about. Um, and that took me 
from about noon today until, oh, hi, lambs. Hey, lambs. It took me from about noon today till maybe, what time is it right now? Seven with lunch and some visitors in between. So I'd say it took me about six, five to six hours. So that's pretty good. I'll take that any day because um, we're talking, you know, at least at minimum half the price and also, you know, more, more than a, a significant time reduction. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm trying to get this gate open, but I can't. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna climb over because I wanna show you what we built all this, all these, uh, all that tractor for. All right, here we go. We got about 100 Freedom Rangers in here. You can see they are somehow out of water. That's not good. Looks like I forgot to take the cap off the water earlier, so they didn't get any water out of there, but that one's full, or was full this morning. And these guys are about day 17 in the brooder and they're coming along nice i think they look slow but you know i always think they look a little slow or i'm sorry a little small but we'll test them here uh, in five days when they're ready to go out and uh, that's a thursday and if they're not quite ready we'll just wait for the weekend it's okay a couple extra days in the brooder ain't gonna hurt but uh again we're past the second week in brooding so that means that we're going to start using our timer which you can see up there, the brooder is plugged into that timer and it is going to get them used to the outside by shutting off the heat lamps. Uh, I'm sorry you guys are thirsty, weren't you? Sorry about that. Have to keep remembering to do that. These are the waters that I use when I'm out on pasture. And uh, I just put them in this morning and forgot to open the water valve. So uh, you can tell that since they're sleeping on the edges, the inside is too warm for them. So that means it's probably time for you to either change the bulbs out from 250s down to 125s or 175s, whatever you have, something that's lower. And then it's also time to maybe shut those heat lamps off during the middle of the day. And you can see that's what I've done here. Middle of the day where those tabs are out around 1130, 1230, 130. Um, just for a half hour time, as the days go on, I'll start doing half hours earlier in the day and half hours later in the day, and then I'll start filling half hours in so they'll have, you know, further and further time without a heat lamp. Um, and then we will just get them into pasture. I'll probably flip, you know, one of these in the morning and one of these in the afternoon every day for the next five days uh, and keep filling them in. You just kind of go, go by what you have uh, from your observations, you know, if it look like they're too cold, then back off a little bit. It also goes by the weather. Today we had an absolutely stunning day, and so we, uh, well, you can see them all back there. Yep, so it looks like it's probably time to go even more uh, rigorous with the shutting off the heat lamps, um, because they're huddled up there trying to get away from the heat, and once I give them some feed they'll all get up and move on to the next thing so that's the status they're one more week from pasture and now we are all ready with a home for them out on pasture all right gotta get over this gate again <clears throat> may as well do it while i'm still young and nimble enough to do so and if you're uh, checking out the instagrams at the farm you'll see that there's uh you know some sheep and some lambs to be had and they're cute as ever and i have a whole bunch of video for that that i haven't gone through i'll try and get to that this weekend but it's so hard when the weather is so nice all right thanks a lot everyone good night